All right, um, let's get started. Uh, hello and welcome to the first session of the UQM seminar summer series. Uh, today, we are very happy to have Biao Lian and Yashar Komijani as our speakers. Our first speaker, uh, our first speaker is uh, Biao Lian from Princeton University, and he's going to tell us about integrability and chaos of 1 plus 1D chiral fermions. Biao, go ahead. Okay. Okay, thanks, Hassan, for the nice introduction. Also, uh, uh, thanks for inviting me to this series of virtual seminars. Uh, it's very happy to uh, be here today. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the uh, integrability and the chaos of 1 plus 1D chiral fermions. Uh, so, most of my talk will be based on our work down at Princeton uh, with my collaborators, Shuaji Songdi and Zhen Bing Yang. Um, um, and I'll also talk a little bit about follow-up work um, in progress. Um, okay, so uh, the outline of my talk will be as follows. Uh, in part one, uh, I'll talk about uh, uh, inter integrability regime of the interacting chiral fermions with a little uh, review of the known results and, uh, uh, and our new, uh, new studies. And in the part two, I'll go to the quantum chaos regime of the, uh, of the system and, uh, and we will show that in the larger limit, we can define a chiral such that here could have model, uh, which is exactly solvable and show quantum chaos behavior. And lastly, I'll uh, talk about some outlook. Okay, um, so um, the chiral fermions is first come up with uh, by Hermann Weyl, uh, soon after Dirac proposed his Dirac equation for relativi relativistic fermions. So in one plus one D, uh, the chiral fermion um, basically, when the Dirac fermions are uh, half ma mass zero, the Dirac equation can be reduced to two chiral fermions, and each of which uh, propagates only in one direction uh, at a constant speed, which in high energy is the speed of, speed of light. So the other reduction of the chiral fermions is given by uh, Eto Marana, um, who, uh, who proposed that in certain spatial dimensions, one could uh, uh, have self-conjugate fermion fields, uh, which are Majorana fermions, and this indicates your particle is equivalent to antiparticle. And uh, uh, it turns out in 1 plus 1D, one could apply both the wire and Majorana uh, condition to obtain a wire Majorana equation, which describes a chiral Majorana fermion propagates, uh, propagating unidirectionally at a constant speed and uh, has particle equivalent to antiparticle. So in condensed matter physics, the chiral fermions uh, arise in many topological, uh, 2 plus 1D topological systems, uh, which are gapped in the bulk and uh, break time were also symmetry. So uh, for example, in uh, the, car the charged chiral fermions can arise on the edge of integer quantum Hall effect, quantum Nullis Hall effect, or turn insulators, while the chiral Majorana fermions, uh, which are chart neutral, uh, can occur on the edge of uh, P plus one, P plus IP, uh, uh, topological superconductor, uh, the Fabian fractional quantum Hall state, and also the chiral spin liquid. Um, so um, while many uh, interesting properties of chiral fermions are known, like the quantum Hall effect, etc., another surprising uh, experimental fact of the chiral fermions is they are highly coherent in, in sufficiently clean systems. So um, for example, um, um, uh, interference uh, experiments uh, of the charged chiral fermions has been done in quantum Hall systems, uh, which at sufficiently to low temperature, uh, you could see a perfect uh, oscillating behavior due to the interference uh, as done by the Chicago uh, Uwen Kahn's group. So, um, so this, this suggests actually the, um, the chiral fermions, the coherence of the chiral fermions survives the low energy interactions uh, in, in, in such systems. Uh, and in mathematically, we, uh, we could understood them as nearly integrable. So here, integrability in quantum systems means exactly solvable uh, and infinite number of local conserved quantities. And uh, uh, the, uh, the, the evolution in general uh, is expected to be insen uh, insensitive to the initial condition variations like that in the classical systems. So, um, so indeed, um, one of the most known um, uh, integrable quantum, quantum models uh, is the chiral Lattinger liquid model, 
uh, which is uh, which can be written in Marana basis as as a model of n equal to four flavors of chiral Marana modes. So um, so the model has an action as shown here. Basically, uh, one one has a kinetic term um, uh, which is uh, which is um, here. I assume it's qu equivalent for other four fermions, and you can have one uh, interaction, one four fermion interaction among the four uh, Marana fermions, and that's the only the only term, only interacting term you can write down, which is um, which is not irrelevant. So um, you, a more familiar form of this model is uh, in terms of the spinful complex fermion basis. Basically, one could redefine the Marana fermions as a spin up complex fermion and a spin down complex fermion. Um, and N here means the density of the complex fermions. And then the model is just a, um, just a model with, with a interaction between spin up and spin down uh, fermions, density density interaction. So this model is known to uh, be integrable, uh, to, to be an integrable non-fermi liquid, which shows a spin charge separation, um, as I'll explain uh, in the below. So basically the model, um, the technique used to solve the model is called Bosonization. Um, basically the idea is one could define um, boson field as, uh, as follows, as this expression which has a, has a physical meaning of exciting one electron um, from below the Fermi surface to above the Fermi surface. And uh, you sum over all the Ks and uh, with a proper, uh, with a proper um, normalization factor one over Q, proportion to one over Q, one could prove that this field is actually uh, satisfying the commutation relation of the boson fields, therefore defines a, a well-defined boson, boson field. And the Fourier transform with this boson field is just uh, is nothing but the uh, familiar Jordan Wigner phase in solving the icing model, uh, which is which is basically the integral of all the electron densities to the left of the x, uh, where x is the point, uh, times two pi. So this gives the bosonization mapping um, basically from the fermion fermion representations. Basically, the fermion fields can be um, rewritten as e to the i phi and e to the minus i phi, um, uh, which um, yeah, which, which basically uh, characterizes the anti commutation relation between them, and uh, and the density uh, uh, the density operator, the fermion density operator maps to a linear uh, function phi, which is partial x phi over two pi. So um, so one could then bosonize the uh, um, the n to four model uh, written in the spinful fermion basis um, as a quadratic uh, boson boson action. Basically, um, the kinetic term maps to a, a quadratic kinetic term of the uh, complex fermion uh, of the bosons, while the interactions, because the density maps to partial x phi, uh, the density density interaction becomes also a quadratic interaction, and this allows us to um, solve the model exactly as free bosons, um, basically by diagonalizing uh, the boson fields here, uh, one could obtain two free bosons uh, which propagate at different velocities, uh, one plus minus j over two pi respectively, where j is the interaction strength. So uh, the physical meaning of these two, uh, these two boson fields um, uh, so uh, is clear when you, when you look at the uh, electron density. So basically, uh, the phi up plus phi down mode uh, has a physical meaning of being the density, the total density of the fermions, while the phi up minus phi down is the uh, uh, spin spin density of the original mode. So um, this leads to a spin uh, spin charge separation. So um, so in this example, we we see that the equal to four model is actually free uh, free car bosons, which are integrable and the bosons serve as quasi-particles. And one could also re-fermionize the model to obtain the fermion-Green's function uh, in which one uh, both velocities would play a role and the spectral uh, weight of the uh, Green's function would look like this with two, with two peaks at the, uh, at the two velocities. Uh, but uh, you note that the spectral weight is entirely bounded between the two velocities. And um, earlier, there are experiments in one-dimensional nanowires, which are, although not, not chiral, uh, but uh, 
but uh, if you look at just one component of the chiral fermions, it's the same physics, and they uh, they indeed see the spin charge uh, spin charge um, peaks in the spectral weight of the fermions. So um, the question we want to uh, investigate is um, is this integrability still preserved as the number of flavors uh, of fermion Majorana fermion modes increase? So in general, um, if you have n interacting chiral Majorana modes. Uh, you could write down, uh, so ignoring all the irrelevant interactions, you could write down a model like this, which contains contains more uh, four-forming interactions. Basically, you could have a fermion interaction between any any four of the uh, Majorana modes. And here, JIJKL is a total uh, anti-symmetric real, real tensor. So this model has several features. The fir first, as you might already noted, um, the number of interactions would increase quickly as as the number of flavor increases as a power into the force, and the model actually, if you if you do a, a scaling analysis, the model is scaling invariant. Um, for example, in the I think the four case we already showed the interaction just modifies the velocity, and therefore it's a it's a it's a scaling invariant marginal um, marginal perturbation. Um, but but this term breaks the Lorentz symmetry. Basically, you no longer have the Lorentz boost symmetry because the fermion, the four fermion, uh, the four of the fermions are all chiral fermions. They have a scaling dimension two comma zero, which breaks the rotation symmetry of um, of the Lorentz symmetry. So um, so this model is really is not a is no longer a conformal um, model. Um, and in I think the four case as we. As we have seen, there are two velocities, which means there are two speed of lights. So that's why uh, the Lorentz symmetry is broken. And uh, just to note that this fermion fermion action can also be understood as a fermion representation of the uh, S O N one cut Moody algebra currents. So these are basically current current operators. So um, we first examine the N to the five case. In this case, you have five interactions. Um, if you naively do the uh, Bosonization, um, for example, we, we use the first two uh, chiro, uh, chiro fermions to define, uh, chiro maranas to define a boson field, and this, the third and fourth define another, and for the fifth, you need a, also a, a, another boson field. Then um, the first term, the psi one, psi two, psi three, psi four term has no problem. You, you still get a quadratic interaction uh, after Bosonization. Uh, but all the other four terms after Bosonization become some nonlinear functions um, involving sine and cosine. Uh, basically, the model looks like a chiral sine garden uh, sine garden model. So one would wonder whether the model is still still solvable. But actually, there is a better better idea to um, think about the problem. So basically. Um, because the kinetic term still has a SON rotation symmetry between all the, all the fermion bases, um, you can you can try to find a proper fermion basis to re, to simplify the uh, interactions, and then do bosonization in the new basis. So basically, the, the idea is uh, to note that the five interactions can be uh, defined as a uh, in a Hodge dual um, into a into a SO five vector uh, in the uh, five Five dim in the in the five-dimensional um, flavor space of the Majorana fermions. So under SO5 rotation, this these five interactions actually rotates as a vector. So you can always find a proper SO5 Majorana basis, um, uh, um, which rotates the uh, interaction into the fifth direction. And as a result, you in the new basis you just have one interactions only between the four Majorana fermions in the first first four flavors. So then it's clear that the model decomposes into an n to the four model and a free chiral Majorana uh, fermion uh, of the fifth flavor. So the model is still exactly solvable in this case, equivalent to free bosons and free chiral Majoranas. And we find the model is still integrable. So then we proceed to n to the six. So n to six is more complicated. You have 15 interactions. Um, but um, by a similar idea, um, just to note that these, these interactions in the six dimensional flavor space can be 
uh, can be uh, hot dilute into a anti-symmetric tensor IIJ, and then you, by a proper SO6 rotation basis rotation, you could still um, you could uh, you could diagonalize or or block diagonalize the matrix into just the three eigenvalues, and uh, after after this, you would find the interaction uh, becomes becomes just becomes uh, three terms um, with the three eigenvalues we just find, and um, after after this, we could do the bosonization uh, using two neighboring uh, Majorana fermions uh, to define a boson field by I, and uh, um, as a result, the three interactions are just uh, just reduced to quadratic quadratic terms in the boson field. And when just uh, get a more complicated velocity matrix between the boson fields. Um, and by diagonalizing this velocity matrix, one would find the three free bosons um, actually uh, with different velocities. Uh, but the difference is now, um, in terms of the original fermion basis, they are a more complicated uh, superposition of the densities of the original fermion fermions. So again, we find the angular six model is integrable. It's equivalent to three free chiral bosons. So this, however, cannot go on uh, forever. So for angular seven, uh, we find um, so you have you have at least the thirty five interactions, and in this case, you find no matter how you rotate your um, fermion basis, you you always have too many uh, nonlinear interaction interaction terms which are nonlinear after bosonization. So uh, basically you, you get many of the sine cosine terms uh, after after the bosonization. So um, so then I would call this uh, intrinsic nonlinearity. Um, it cannot be eliminated by just rotation of the basis. So um, so one, uh, because nonlinearity really implies chaos, then we conjecture uh, the system is no longer integrable if you if you n is greater or equal to se equal to seven, and you start to lose coherence. Um, okay, so now let me go to part two, uh, the, the the chaos part. Um, any questions so far? Okay, if not, uh, let me just proceed. So. Um, so chaos is a concept. Sorry, maybe um, can I can I ask you a question? Uh, yeah, sure. So can mm -hmm. you, can you say again why six and seven doesn't doesn't uh, six works but seven doesn't work? Yeah, sure. So for six, uh, you can see that uh, um, you can simplify the interaction by a Hodge two into a into a tensor form, and we we still know how to deal with tensors. We can diagonalize them, so that helps us to simplify the model. But for if you have seven flavors. You use the same technique, you would get a three tensor. It doesn't simplify the interaction uh, quite quite much, um, and we still don't know how to deal with the three tensor. So um, you could also try to do some random rotations, but uh, but so you my, find. my, my that, question, my yeah. question is that for SO six, do you need six bosons or do you need uh, do you need more bosons? Uh, you need three bosons. These are Marana fields, so one boson is there are three three, three, bosons. three bosons. Yeah. Okay. So you have three velocities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, chaos. Chaos is a concept from classical physics. Basically, um, integrable systems are predictable um, as as long as you know in initial condition. But uh, uh, chaotic systems uh, soon lose the predictability um, uh, when you when you evolve as a function of time. So um, the quantum an analog is called quantum chaos. The definition, which uh, although although the definition is still not quite clear, not not precise yet, it is uh, it is uh, generically um, believed that the quantum chaos is profoundly related to the decoherence and the evolution towards thermo, thermo equilibrium. So, um, a well-known uh, example uh, of of a solvable uh, quantum chaos model is the such yet uh, get half model in zero dimensional uh, in, in zero plus one dimension uh, which uh, which which is basically a zero dimensional model with large number of marijuana fermions zero dimensional marijuana fermions and you can add a add a q fermion interaction uh, among any of the any of the q fermions so um, 
if you do a dimension analysis, the interaction in zero dimension is relevant. So the low energy physics is dominated by the interaction. And uh, just quickly summarize what, what is known. Basically, the model is known to be solvable at low energies, basically when, when the temperature, inverse temperature beta j is great, much greater than one. Uh, so sorry, so, so I, yeah, I should mention that j here is the interaction strength defined as the Gaussian average of, the, of the, these random interactions because there are a large number of them. So we, we just assume they are random. And this factor n to the power q minus y is just to ensure the energy, the total energy doesn't diverge. So um, the model is solvable at low energies by large n expansion techniques. And it has a zero temperature entropy proportion to n, which indicates it's similar to a glass state. And it has a maximum Lyapunov for x um, to power beta, uh, which I'll explain later. Um, and the level statistics um, also shows a chaotic behavior. It resembles the um, Wooden Dyson distribution of the random matrix, which I'll also mention later. So, um, in the one plus one dimensional case, um, n equal to seven is pretty hard to, to deal with, but uh, large n is, is, becomes easier because we can use some large n expansion technique. So, we first consider a model in the large n limit. In this case, you have a huge number of interactions. And again, we need to assume uh, they scale with one over n to the third uh, for the energy not to diverge. And the interaction strength j here, uh, so differently, the interaction j here is actually a dimensionless parameter, uh, basically because these terms, you, by a dimension analysis, they're still exactly marginal. So we, we define the model as a Cairo Chiro, SYK model. Um, and the model, as I just mentioned, it's a scaling invariant model, but has no Lorentz symmetry. So um, similar to a zero dimensional model, you could uh, um, throw away many of the Feynman diagrams um, by larger expansion. And uh, the Green's functions uh, to the leading order uh, uh, is, is given by these Feynman diagrams. And just by, by solving the Schrodinger Dyson equation, you can obtain the uh, um, the large and averaged Green's function, fermion, fermion Green's function. And so it's, it's a non-trivial problem to solve because there are, there are two variables now uh, rather than just one, but surprisingly, it's still, still exactly solvable. And we find the result, the result, resulting Green's function looks like uh, this, which also contains two, two velocities, u plus u minus, um, and u plus u minus are given by one plus minus j over two pi. So um, in order to preserve the chirality, um, here we restrict j to be smaller than two pi. Um, but in the end, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, comment on strong, stronger j's. So, um, so basically, um, if, you, if you remember my result earlier, earlier shown for the angle of four case, you may find the Green's function, so here written in imagined time, but, but the Green's function has the same, exactly the same form as that of the angle of four. However, the model is actually pretty different. Uh, and uh, you could show that actually n to four is an integral ball. You have quasi particles, but n to infinity is actually um, chaotic and uh, has no quasi particle. Uh, but this is still surprising and we haven't uh, fully understood why, uh, uh, why these, uh, uh, these Green's functions look, uh, look the same. And the finite temperature Green's function also looks the, exactly the same as n to four. Uh, by which you can extract uh, a few a few uh, thermal quantities. So the first thing we verified is that the thermal Hall uh, thermal Hall conductance is still quantized if these if these fermions are edges of a two plus one d uh, topological phase. Um, and uh, the thermal entropy density uh, is just a linear in T um, with a with a factor given like this. Um, so. A, different, a difference from the zero dimensional SYK model is uh, in this case, there is no zero temperature entropy density. So it's basically, it's not a glass, uh, not a glass state. So um, we then examine the Lyapunov exponent of the model in the OTOC. So, so OTOC is short for out of time out of the correlator, which is, um, which is a concept uh, used to define a Lyapunov exponent. Uh, analogous to that in the classical chaos. So in classical chaos, Lyapunov exponent characterizes how fast two, two nearby orbitals 
initial initially nearby um, separate from each other as time t goes on so in general um, such separations follow follows exponential growth uh, with a with a Lyapunov exponent greater than zero so the quantum analog is given by um, replacing uh, for example um, uh, this partial x t over partial x zero squared uh, squared just in in order that the, the the quantum average does not average the effect out so um by turning it into a person uh, from person bracket into a um, commentator uh, one would find a, identify a particular term which has a anonymous order of time basically from time t to zero then to t to zero um, which, which in some limits gives the exponential growing behavior analogous to the uh, uh, to the to the Lyapunov exponent in the classical chaos. So, uh, quantum, uh, but quantumly, um, as proved by Manasina, Schenker, and Stanford, that uh, this quantumly Lyapunov exponent has an upper bound at temperature one over beta, which is two pi over beta. So, um, here we calculate uh, the the OTOC of the um, Fermion fields in our Chiro SYK model, um, and again uh, one could do a leading one over n order uh, expansion um, to sum over just the part of the diagram is called the ladder diagram, and as a result, indeed we find um, so so this uh, this function is defined at uh, function uh, at time t and x, but if you look at just the particular velocity um, x equal to v t. Um, if v is between u minus and u plus, we find we do find uh, the system has the exponential growing behavior, um, which which is uh, which is about out of one some out of one constant minus out of one over n exponential growing piece, uh, in agreement with the uh, zero dimensional SYK case. So in comparison, the n equal to four case uh, only has OTOC exponentially decaying uh, because it's integrable model uh, integrable model. So, um, so basically, this this tells us the larger limit uh, of the car as what came out is indeed cha chaotic, um, and uh, uh, this is the Lyapunov experiment we showed um, uh, at along different velocities, and you can sh see that the velocity uh, when the velocity is between u minus and u plus, which is uh, basically the causality cone of this model, the Lyapunov experiment are positive. So this means all the information is propagating. Uh, in the in the casalid cone are chaotic, basically are growing exponentially. And the leading uh, the leading Lyapunov exponent at uh, the maximal uh, uh, where where the maximal the, the velocity where the maximal Lyapunov exponent is approached, um, uh, th this leading exponent approaches the maximal chaos bound two pi or beta when when the interaction j goes to two pi. Which is the strongest interaction allowed if you if your chirality is still preserved for j greater than two pi you would have something propagating backwards and uh, that kind of um, fails the model um, not preserving the chirality okay. um, yeah so so but uh, yeah so we do have a limit which which uh, it approaches the maximal chaos bound so another um, another um, feature of the quantum chaos is the level space in statistics. Basically, the idea is to look at the many body levels uh, of all the, uh, all the levels and extract, just extract out the separation of nearby uh, levels. Then the probability distribution of these um, nearby levels would, uh, uh, would, would satisfy some distribution. And if the system is chaotic, uh, as first shown by BGS, um, Basically, um, this distribution would resemble the nearest neighbor distribution of a Gaussian random matrix. Uh, so, in general, if you if your system has time world symmetry, uh, it resembles the Gaussian orthogonal ensemble random matrix, um, uh, which is a Wigan Dyson distribution as shown here. And this is an example of the of, a, of the levels uh, in the heavy nuclei. Um, which is a zero-dimensional chaotic system, and when when do see um, these um, this nice nicely fitted um, into the Wigner Dyson distribution. So for integrable systems, 
as first shown by um, conjecture by Barry and Tabor, that the, the integrable systems would uh, satisfy the Poisson distribution, which is the distribution of randomly independent variables, um, which is just the exponential um, behavior like this. So um, we then write down uh, exact diagonalization codes for calculating the model at small n. Um, this is still in progress, uh, but uh, I, but the nice thing is, indeed, we find for angular seven, if you if you look at uh, a given total momentum sector k, um, we do find the uh, level statistics show a chaotic behavior. So so this is a level level distribution which is pretty smooth, uh, and the level uh, level spacing distribution uh, is a shows a perfect Wigner Dyson distribution, and this is the level statistics ratio which you, one could use to diagonalize how close the distribution is to the the um, GOE with the Dyson distribution and you show it shows that at large enough momentum it converges pretty well. Uh, so this this uh, kind of proves our conjecture that the uh, angular seven already becomes chaotic and for angular eight similar uh, similar things would happen. And for angular six, uh, it's immediately different. So the many body uh, eigenstates um, just satisfy some very wild functions uh, because of the huge degeneracies due to the integrable structure and the level spacing uh, statistics just uh, um, is almost almost a delta function it's not even a Poisson distribution and this this uh, because we can also solve the model by hand this basically agrees with our um, previous conclusions um, okay um, that's mostly my talk and uh, let me just go to a few future directions. So um, so it's pretty, still pretty interesting uh, to look at some small n uh, behaviors uh, which we're working on um, by exact diagonalization, whether, uh, whether the OTOC can still show some chaotic behavior for, for n not that large. And uh, also another interesting question is what happens in the strong interaction, j greater than two pi. So for j greater than two pi, as I mentioned, actually that your chirality is not no longer preserved. Basically, your light cone is no longer chiral. Um, um, but uh, basically, in this case, you you would need some UV corrections to um, to make sense, make the model make sense. Uh, and the the basic idea is your uh, at low energies, you might have some negative velocities uh, propagating backwards. But at a large, large enough momentum, they they has to be um, uh, corrected back by some UV corrections. So, so the resulting theory would just be actually uh, be some um, uh, more more right movers and uh, some some left left movers, and the total chirality is still preserved. And uh, it, it will be interesting to exa examine uh, what chaos would look like in this case. So. Um, um, also, there's a wide class of chiral systems which we could uh, think about their integrability and chaos. Um, for example, the edge of fraction quantum Hall stays in non-abelian phases uh, given by various K matrices. Um, and, um, and also another surprising uh, thing is the model is, uh, the model uh, we, we just studied the larger model uh, is scaling invariant, but uh, has no Lorentz symmetry. So in some sense, um, they're they're kind of semi CFTs. You don't have the Lorentz boost, but you still have scaling invariants. Um, and uh, um, it shows some shows some behavior beyond the description of conformal field theory. So it's uh, not like the instead of the uh, ink of the four case, the ink of the four case actually you can see the model still decomposes into direct sums of two conformal field theories with different speed of lights. But uh, in the larger n case, you actually, um, you, you cannot decompose them into CFTs. So um, this suggests that uh, one could think about critical systems which are beyond the description of conformal field theories. Okay, um, with this, I'll conclude here and uh, questions are welcome. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Biao for such interesting talk. So now we have a few minutes for questions. Uh, one question. Mm -hmm. What happens uh, if you start uh, with different velocities as well as uh, random, 
well as, as well as interruptions mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, very good question. Actually, we are studying them using exact diagonalization now. So if you, um, if you, if you add velocity and isotropies as well, um, it seems that the angle to, um, n smaller, n smaller than seven also becomes chaotic. Um, but, uh, yeah, it depends on the ratio of the velocity and isotropy and the interactions. If they are too, too far away from each other, the model, the, the level statistics still looks like looks like integrable. So when, when they are in, when they are comparable for n smaller than seven, um, it seems the, um, the system is very chaotic, but if, if they, if they differ by a lot, um, the model is still kind of exhibits some nearly integrable, integrable structure. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, good question. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, so I mean, you talked about this edge of the, let's, let's say, quantum all systems. So, there I can imagine that this J R J K L would be position dependent. Uh, good question. Yeah. So, so have you thought uh, about it? What does is there a possibility to have some progress in that? Thing? Uh, yeah. So, if you if you allow those J's to be um, position independent, which means your system has spatial disorder. Um, um, by by naive uh, naive dimension counting, um, I mean suppose suppose this this uh, interaction correlation becomes becomes a function times the delta delta x minus x prime function, uh, then your di by dimension counting these interaction would be uh, irrelevant. So um, I would imagine if your disorder is strong enough, then then you would lose lose the uh, chaotic behavior. Basically, it 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 may again behave as Free, free fermions. Um, yeah, but uh, for not for disorders not so strong, we we haven't um, understood the the question yet, so, uh, the the problem yet. So basically, for example, you can add a quadratic mass term to the kinetic term, uh, which is basically just the shift of momentum. But the shift of momentum, if if the mass term depends on flavor, then then the shift of momentum would depend on flavor, which would give a, also give a x dependence. Uh, of the interaction, but in in this case, it's more more regular. It, it's not a totally random distribution. Um, yeah, this might in this case there might be something left, uh, which we are thinking about. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, can I ask a question about the uh, O talk at finite but large n, which mm -hmm. you briefly mentioned? You're looking at. Uh, is it already clear that whether or not there's going to be a regime of exponential growth for finite n at low um, temperatures? Uh, it's still uh, pretty difficult to to say there is one. So there, there is something, something, yeah, something like a kick downwards. So, so if you basically, if you look at the OTOC, uh, if it's exponential decaying, then the slope should be smaller and smaller. In this case, the slope is larger and larger. There is indeed a region where where the slope seems to increase, but uh, it's it's very difficult to say whether it's exponential behavior because this this uh, range of exponential growing uh, for angle seven or eight uh, it's still pretty small, uh, and yeah yeah so we are we are still working on that. Yeah, but the uh, yeah but another interesting thing would be. Um, uh, to look at the long time OTOC when the, when the chiral fermions already, if you have a finite boundary, actually in ED, it always have a finite boundary. When when it comes back, um, yeah, in the long time behavior, what, what the OTOC will look like. Yeah, okay, sounds like a very interesting question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks for the nice question. Ask the question. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, did you, uh, I'm wondering uh, whether you have checked the case for n to eight, because um, I, I don't know whether this behavior is like a mod eight property or it's really a small mm -hmm. distribution. Yeah, good question. So um, yeah, indeed, eight. The number eight sometimes seems seems magic, and uh, you do have some interesting things. But so far, we haven't found. Uh, because we, we we cannot go to angle sixteen now, that that's too large. But uh, angle eight, uh, 
uh, it seems there's nothing special so far. Um, yeah, but we are we are still searching for uh, yes. possible evidences. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Um, so why do we need to consider chiral models? Is it to avoid generating a gap? And generating a gap would not be yeah, so so yeah, of course, mathematically, the advantage is chiral, chiral uh, structure. Yeah, restricting to chiral fermions allows you to solve the model exactly, and actually, uh, um, it's it's a it's a great convenience. And the non-chiral cases are actually earlier studied uh, studied by uh, uh, yeah high some some high energy people. Uh, basically, it's a it's a uh, so they consider non-chiral fermions, larger number of non-chiral fermions with a non-chiral interaction. Uh, but uh, basically they show that in the larger limit, the, the non-chiral interaction is always irrelevant, marginally irrelevant. So that makes the model less interesting uh, at low energies. Uh, so here, the, the, the advantage of chiral, chiral fermions is if you do uh, the beta function calculation, you find the interactions uh, to out order is marginal. So that allows you to have something non-trivial at, at uh, any temperature, basically. Okay, uh, but, but for moderate and non-chiral thermals should have um, relevant per interactions, right? Because they do generate a gap. So back to uh, yeah, yeah, so, but, but that depends on, yeah. Yeah, that depends on model. So if you, if you consider ink to four or something, so yeah, you need to tune the parameters. So for large n, if you assume, just assume this random, this random distribution. I, yeah, basically I mean specific to this random distribution, what they showed is it's marginally irrelevant. But maybe, yeah, maybe there's some way to modify the interaction to make it relevant. All right, thanks. Yeah, sure. All right, uh, thanks Bio again, and uh, let's move to the next talk. Thank you. Okay, okay, thanks. <laughs>